Good morning, MacArthur! In today's program, Astrid's Toy Appeal, Illuminar Magic, Guy Walton's Muddy Waltz, Fighting for Fiji, Quilted with Love and Laughter, Our Newest Roundabout Danger, and more. Here I am in downtown Campbelltown with young 10-year-old Astrid who started her own charity called Help Astrid Pay It Forward. Astrid collects toys, stationery and other useful things for less fortunate kids. I saw less fortunate kids because I know a couple, so I wanted to do something. Astrid's, you know, done such a fantastic job of um, gathering all these toys from so many different people. Um, you know, we're going to have a great time giving them out to to kids and families um, around MacArthur. It didn't actually take us that long when we like got my mum got our Facebook page out. She actually had to put out my name as well. So we lots of people just wanted to donate. So we got quite a few toys from the beginning, and then our school started to try and help me. So they gave they gave out little messages. So lots of my friends from school donated as well. Minter on the go is just helping Astrid. She's done all the hard work collecting all the toys and um, we've just jumped in right at the end to help deliver them to all these worthy charities that Astrid has chosen. She's just a, a little angel that's been sent our way to help us out with some gifts. I do many things outside of this as well. I make art for a nursing home because mm -hmm. I realise that there's not that much many people who get delivered art on Christmas or Easter or anything. So I make art to help them. Astrid has always uh, wanted to help people. On Christmas morning, she each year, it's the third year, she goes and hands out to the, all her crafts. She works on it for about four months. Next project, a box of cuddles. I'm going to do a box of cuddles. So I'm going to put some toys and everything and people with bad parents who go to like that special place they can choose a toy so, and they can cuddle and they can give it to when they go to new homes. They definitely can make a difference it's the small things that put a smile on people's faces it's not um, things that cost a lot of money it's not um, things that are given to people it's the time it's the little tiny gifts in life that a lot of people don't aren't lucky enough to receive. Thousands of visitors flocked to Picton's Illuminat Festival this year, golly-eyed as the town's historic buildings were transformed into a magical kingdom of colour and art projections. So I started a year ago um, with an arts and culture working group. And the original idea was to just, I think, paint some murals onto, onto some walls. So that was the first year last year, and we were hoping for maybe around 5,000 people. And in the end, it was estimated around 15 to 20,000 people came. So it was huge. I think it's really special, this type of event, because we use the local artwork. So the local artists have a part in the festival. They can bring along their family and friends and see their artwork projected onto the buildings. The theme is growing together people and places this year. So it's going to be um, young people through to old people that are going to be projected onto the tree. We had about 60 people in the Lantern Parade last year. So this year we've got about 80 or 90. So we run workshops with um, children with disabilities, school holiday workshops for children. That gives the kids an uh, opportunity to come in and create their own masterpiece and then own it and walk in the Lantern Parade and they walk very proudly and they're really excited to do something like that. Never ending 
best described as a musician's tribute to the centenary of World War I. Guy Walton's new album, A Muddy Waltz, has just been released, accompanied by a live show. He sits in a corner, the corner of the bar. He thinks of days gone by, and he wonders why. Seems like an age ago. I just feel moved by war. war in terms of the human impact it has on, of course, the soldiers and the people who, who go and serve and, and fight for freedoms, uh, but also the families and people left behind or, and who have to wait and, and those who lose loved ones. I was walking around the house one evening, afternoon, I don't know exactly when, and I, I said to my, when I was writing the songs for the album, and I said to my wife, sort of randomly, I said, oh, I want to write a waltz. I want a waltz on the album. And uh, my wife just came out with and said, oh, a muddy waltz. Holes in the ground, holes in the sky. It's a muddy waltz, so we've forgotten quite why. They told us to join. They said we'd be free. It's a great big world, my not and the show really follows, uh, follows the diggers from the very first song on the album, which is called Invaders, which is really when Germany came into Belgium in 1914. Uh, and then it moves from Invaders to a young uh, Albert, young Australian guy signing up very enthusiastically, as they did at the beginning of the war, because they didn't know how bad it was going to be. Uh, and, and just kind of progresses through the war and going off to, to Egypt and the Middle East and then to the Western Front and, and back home again. It sort of ends with a reflection, I suppose, on a soldier's life. I built a few props for the show. I built a tank. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's a, it's a, um, a World War I tank, which were kind of like those, like a rectangle that was pushed like that. You know, they weren't like World War II ones now. And um, I did a show at a high school once and we had a bit of a question and answer thing after the show and one of the kids asked me if my tank was a submarine. <laughs> he fought on the hills He fought on the plains He fought in a foreign land So we could remain and the bullets they went by As they tore the morning sky And his friends they would show Pictures of a girl they know I'm not a historian and I'm not trying to be. Uh, um, so the way I tend to do things is I read, I read a lot. And, and I kind of have a general idea of what I want to get out of it, what information I need, but I try to sort of let it what sticks with me, sticks with me. And then I feel like I don't have to force it. My, my great-grandfather was in the AIF. When I started doing all of this, I didn't know that. Let's see where it goes, in a way. I, I, I try and take a fairly philosophical approach to things. I mean, nothing in life is guaranteed. Look, I hope people like the album and that it maybe helps people reflect upon the lives of, of those fellas from World War I. Return servicemen doing it tough will definitely feel the love when 100 quilts leave Glenmore next month from the Camden Country Quilters Guild. I think we just wanted to make them feel that people were thinking about them. It wasn't just them fighting their demons. Lovingly put together by the ladies for RSL Comfort Quilts and Home for Heroes, the quilts will first be displayed at Government House. We got started last August and we've probably made about 100 quilts. We're hoping that we will encourage young people to come and learn how to quilt and in, join us and keep our craft going. We wanted to help them understand patchwork. Patchwork is it's something that everybody can do because it's a lot simpler than people think.
if someone is a stranger and they turn up at the meeting or mm. or they come to some an exhibition we try and include them and make them feel good within themselves and happy within themselves so it gives them a sense of belonging and gives them an interest i've been coming here for um i was one of the ones at the old schoolhouse then i moved to camden and then i got lonely so i joined up again i'm a, a lapsed quilter and I'm not very good. I've had a couple of strokes but I still enjoy the company more than anything. As a group we've donated quilts for many years. We've been going for 27 years. We were one of the first groups that started the wig library over at Campbelltown Hospital for the cancer patients. The reason why I um, became involved with Camden Gill was uh, the fact that I had family members all die in palliative care and um, I saw the quilts on the beds and it just touched my heart and I wanted to then be part of that. The Guild's next pop-up sewing day is on Thursday 26th of May at the CWA Rooms Camden. Remember the excitement when a 17 and a half million dollar upgrade was announced for Eagle Vale Drive to widen the roads, install traffic lights and construct two roundabouts? Well it looks like someone stuffed up on their homework making the Malachite Road roundabout a big disaster according to local residents and taxi drivers. Used to be the intersection was just a little bit further away, then you can see the clear vision for um, both sides of the traffic. But since they built up the roundabout and the, this roundabout is quite big and they put the intersection back towards uh, Malachite Road. And when you bring your car towards um, Eagle View Drive, then you can't see the incoming traffic and also when they're turning into Malakai Road you can't see the traffic. Um, solution is um, if you move the roundabout a bit further or make it smaller then you can see the clear vision or somehow you have to be cut the bushes or uh, the fences from the last house on Malakai Road in future plan for the council to Gregory Hill going through from that road to touching to Camden Valley Way when this traffic gonna be coming on Eagle View Drive is gonna be big 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 disaster at the moment because there's a road work that's why they mentioned 40 k's on that road but it's still 40 k's there looks like some kind of collusion there uh, you know and when if the traffic going 70 k's then it's gonna be a big disaster A sure shout out to young Eli and Sia. This young brother and sister team responded to the Fiji cyclone disaster with a social media appeal that took the MacArthur community by storm. And even as we speak, a truckload of essential goodies is being unloaded in Fiji. So we started the campaign because mum talked to us about uh, Cyclone Winston and how it affected our family. And we wanted to help. And... It is really badly. One of the village, um, the big village is about 28 houses in the village and there were just only about eight, eight houses left. And there's another village that totally all of them has been wiped out. So we started the Facebook page and um, the school wanted to help too. So they had a Mufti day so everyone could wear Islander clothes because it's VG obviously and um, instead of donating a gold coin they could donate an item from a list we made. We thought of the basic things we use every day like food, clothes, toothpaste, hair things and stuff like that. The children wrote some letters and raised over $4,000 um, which will help to get it over there. The best part of the campaign is that um, how we saw that the community cares about um, like donations and people that are struggling. We're just really proud of the children for putting in the effort and realising what the community can do to come together. And we can't wait to show you on the Facebook page when it's received at the village and how excited that they will be to get all of your donated goods. So thank you very much. Thank, thank you, you MacArthur. And that's all we have time for today, Brian. 
Well, if there's anyone out there you know who deserves a shout out, any stories that you know need to be told, happenings you want covered, issues of community concern, and any little ones doing great big things, flick us an email at info at thewizardofozfunland.com or call 4626-7777. Remember, no story is too small to be told if it makes a difference to our community. Have, Have a great, great fortnight! fortnight.